Mauricio there? Uh, peaceful. Oh, welcome, Mauricio. <clears throat> welcome, good Marcellus. What, has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will let belief take hold of him, touching this dreaded sight. Twice seen of us that if again this Afro should come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Well, sit me down and let us hear Bernardo speak to this. Last night of all, when yon same star this westward from the pole had made his course to elude the part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the bell then being one, Ah! In the same figure! Like the king that's dead! Thou art a scholar! Speak to it, Horatio! Hey, looks it not like the king? Mark it, Horatio! Uh, what art thou that you served as this town of night, together with that fair and warlike form by which the very majesty of France is sometimes marched? But have not charged to speak! It is offended! See, it stalks away. I have not charged to speak. Shall I strike at it? Do it, old man. To hear it. Tis gone. We do it wrong, being so majestical. For it is as the air, invulnerable, and our vein glows malicious mockery. It was about to speak when the cock crew. Yes, and then started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. So I've heard, in part do believe it. But look, the morn in rustic mantle black walks o'er the dew of yon high eastward hill. Break bare watch up and let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Helen. For all my mother's life, this spirit, dumb to us, will surely speak to him. Let's do it, I pray, and this morning knows where we shall find him most conveniently. Yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be brief, and that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief, and that our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe, together with remembrance of ourselves, therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, with an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth and funeral and dirge and marriage. Take it to wife. For all our thanks. In that and all things will we show our duty. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? What is it, Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the king. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes? And lose your voice. What would be thy asking not thy giving? My dread lord, your leave and favor to return to Denmark. For when so willingly I came to France. To show my duty in your coronation. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? She hath, my lord. I beseech you, give her leave to go. Take it by fair hour, Laertes, and at thy best graces, spend it at thy will. And now, cousin Hamlet, my son. A little more than him, in less than kind. Good Hamlet, cast thy knighted color off. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die, passing from danger to eternity. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. Tis not alone my leaky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, or the windy suspiration of forced breath, huh. or the fruitful river in the eye, the dejected behavior of the visage, 
together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief, that can denote me truly. But I have that within which has to show these but the trappings and the suits of woe. But not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us, go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you then. Why? Tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in France. Come, madam, this gentle and enforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Come away. Resolve itself into a do. Cut. Cut. How wary, scale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. But two months then. Hey, not so much, not two. So excellent to King, and so loving to my mother, that he might not be teamed the winds of heaven, is in her face too roughly. Must I remember? Why? She would hang on him. And yet, within a month, well, let me not think on it. Oh, friend, thy name is woman, God. A beast that wants to scores of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I am to Hercules. Within a month, she's married. The most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. A break, my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship, <laughs> Horatio! Oh, I'm glad to see thee well. Do you forget myself? Ah, uh, the same, my lord, your poor servant ever. Sir, I'll change that name. <laughs> what make you from Whitmer, Horatio? Marcellus? Oh, my good lord. Oh, I'm glad they are well. Good evening, sir. But yes, what make you from Whitmer? Ah, uh, true in disposition, good my lord. I would not hear enemy say so. I know <laughs> you are no truant. What is your affair here in Paris? My lord. I came to see your father's funeral. I pray you, do not mock me, fellow <laughs> student. I think he wants to see my mother's wedding. Oh, indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Well, thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked needs did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Mm -hmm. My father, Horatio. Methinks I see my father. Uh, where, my lord? In my eye, Horatio. My lord, uh, methinks I saw him yesterday. Saw who? The king, your father. For God's love, let me hear him. Very well. Two nights together had these gentlemen, on their watch, dead dashed in the middle of the night and thus encountered. A figure like your father comes. These hands are not more like. But where was this? Lord, upon the platform when we watched. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did. But well, once he tried to lift up his head as if it would address itself to motion, it shrank and hence the way. Tis very strange. Indeed it is, but we thought it written our duty to at least let you know. Indeed, indeed, sirs. But this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Arms, see? Then saw you not his face. Ah, uh, yeah, my lord. He wore his visor up. What? Look to you, frowning? Ah, uh, counting more of sorrow than anger. I will watch tonight. Perchance to walk again. I won't do will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it though. Hell itself should gate bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you dare to conceal this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. So, very well, upon the platform, Twix. Eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. 
My love is to you. Very well. <laughs> My father's spirit in the arms. All is not well. Why not some foul play? Who would I would come? Till then, sit still. My soul. Foul deeds will rise. Go. All orders are well known. Two men's eyes. Like a green girl, 
Do you believe his tenders? I do not know, my lord. What, I should think? Mary, I will teach you. Think yourself a baby that you have tamed these tenders for true pay. Tender yourself more dearly, or you'll tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion, and hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. From this time, be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence, for Lord Hamlet, do not believe his vows, for they are brokers, mere imploratores of unholy suits, the better to beguile. This is for all. I would not have you talk or give words with the Lord Hamlet. I shall obey. It is very cold. What hour now? Oh, gracious. What hour now? Uh, I think it lacks in 12. No. It is struck. Ah, uh, very well. Well, now is the hour where the spirit held his wont to walk. The king doth wait tonight and takes his ruse. Kettle drum and trumpet thus cry out in triumph his pledge. Oof, is that custom? Aye, Mary, is it? But to my mind, though, and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than the observance. Ah. This heavy headed rebel east and west makes us tax and truce to other nations. Ah, look, look, my lord, it comes. Huh? Angels and ministers of grace, defend us! Be thou a spirit of health, or goblin damned, be thy tents wicked or charitable, thou comest in such a questionable shape, I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, answer me, say wherefore, what should we do? Ah, uh, I think it beckons you to go away with it. But do not go with it. No, by no means. <laughs> it will not speak. And I'll follow it. Ah, my lord, what if it tempts you toward the flood or the dreadful summit of the cliff? It weighs me forth again. I'll follow it. Be ruled. You shall not go. Hold off your hands. My lord, I said no. <laughs> my faith cries out. Still I am called. Gentlemen, by heaven, I say I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. Away! Flames must render up myself. 
Alas, poor ghost. Uh, pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. <coughs> Speak, I am bound to hear. What art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear? What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night. And for the day confined to fast in flames until the foul crimes done in my days are burnt and purged away. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, God, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder most foul, as in the best it is. But this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Hate me to know it, that I, with wings swift as meditation, with the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. Now, Hamlet, listen. Tis given out that, while sleeping within my orchard, a serpent did sting. So that the holy of Francis, but the forged process of my death rankly abused. But know, thy noble youth, the one that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul! My uncle? Aye, the incestuous, the adulterate beast! With witchcraft of his wit, with treacherous gifts, won the heart of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that that went hand in hand with the marriage! <laughs> Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon. Upon thy secure hour thy uncle stole, with most low the lipser within a vial, didst pour the leprous distillment within the porches of my ear. Do not let the bed of Paris be a couch for luxury and canned incest. Taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother eye. Dead. Leave her to those thorns that within her bosom lodge to prick and sting. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember me. shall live within the book and volume of my brain. And villain, smiling, damned villain, as I'm sure it may be so in France. Now it is to my world. It is adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember me. Swart. My lord! My lord! My lord! Lord Hamlet! Happy to go! So be it! Oh, oh. How is he, my noble lord? Oh gosh, what news, my lord? No, you reveal it. Huh? <laughs> what is it, my lord? Why? Right, you were in the right. And so, I find it fit that we shake hands and part ways. Look you, I'll have to pray. These are whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you, hardly. Yes, faith hardly. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, 
But there is Horatio, and much offense too, touching this vision here. It is an honest ghost. That, let me tell you, good friends, give me one poor request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never make no what you have seen tonight. Nay, but swear it. Swear. Upon my fist. On faith, my lord, not I. Swear. Swear. Oh, oh damn, this is wonder strange. Yes, there's a stranger. Give it welcome, Horatio. There are more things that are dreamt of in heaven and earth that are dreamt of in your philosophy. So, grace and mercy, at your most need help you. Swear! Swear! <sighs> Rest. Rest, perturbed spirit. They swear so. Gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend it to you. And let us go in together. <sighs> Still your fingers on your lips, I do pray. <sighs> Times are joint. Curse spite. That ever I was one to set it right. <sighs> okay. Dear Rosa Crantz and Guildenstern, moreover that we much did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something, have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? Gather whether aught to us unknown afflicts in us. Good gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am to men there are not living to whom he more adheres. Your visitation shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. We both obey, and here in the full bed provide our services freely at your feet, to be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz, and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern, and gentle Rosencrantz, and I beseech you instantly to visit my much-too-changed son. Go, some of you, and bring these men where Hamlet is. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. Aye. Amen. Thou still hast been the father of good news? Have I, my lord, and I assure my good liege, I hold my duty, and I do think I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Do speak of that. And he tells me, my dear Gertrude, that he hath found the head and source of all your son's distempers. I doubt it is no other but the maid, his father's death in our overly hasty marriage. Well, we shall sit him. My liege and madam, since brevity is the soul of wit, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad, mad call I it, for to define true madness, what is it but to be nothing else but mad? More matter with less art. Madam. I swear I use no art at all. That he is mad, tis true. I have a daughter who, in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Now, gather and surmise. <clears throat> to the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautiful Ed Ophelia, Thus, in her excellent white bosom. What came this from him to her? <laughs> Good madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. <clears throat> Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt the sun doth move. 
doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. This in obedience hath my daughter shown me, and more above hath his solicitings, as they fell out by means, by time and place, all given to mine ear. But how hath she received his love? What do you think of me? As a man, faithful and honorable. I went round to work, and thus, my young mistress, I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince out of thy star. This must not be. And then I precepts gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens. And he repulsed, fell into the madness wherein now he raves, and all we mourn for. Do you think tis this? It may be very likely. Hmm. Do you know? Sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. Mm -hmm. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind an heiress, then. Mark the encounter. If he loves her not, and be not fallen from his reason, thereon. We will try it. But look, for sadly, the poor wretch comes reading. Oh! Give me leave! How does my good lord Hamlet? Oh, God of mercy! Do you know me, my lord? Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception! Yes. Is a blessing. But not as your daughter may conceive, friend. Look to it. <laughs> yeah. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. What is it you read here, my lord? Words, words, words. My honorable lord, most humbly do I take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me what I would be more willing to part with all, except my life. Except my life, except my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. You go to seek the Lord Hamlet? There he is. God save you, sir. My honored lord. My most dear lord. Lord of Grant's Gilded Stern, yes. How boss thou help you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. Unfortunate's cap, you're not the very button. Nor the soles of her shoe, neither, my lord. Can you live about her waist? Or in the middle of her favors? Faith, her private to me. In the secret parts of this fortune? Oh, most true, she is a strumpet. What's the news? None, my lord, but that the world has grown honest. Ooh. And it's doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let me question more particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved in the hands of the queen? He sends you to prison hither. Prison, my lord? Aye. France is not a prison. There is the world one. Uh, a goodly one, in which there are many confined wards and dungeons. Paris being one of the worst. Why, then, your ambition makes it one. Tis too narrow for your mind. God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. <coughs> Were it not that I have Bad dreams. Which indeed dreams are ambition, for the very substance of the ambitious is merely the shadow of a dream. The dream itself is but a shadow, truly. And I hold ambition of so airy a light of quality that it is but a shadow shadow. <laughs> no such matter. What make you embarrassed? 
To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Beggar that I am, I am even poor in thanks. And yet, my good friends, my thanks are too dear half penny. Were you not sent for? Is it your only climbing? Is it a free visitation? Come, deal justly with me. Come, nay, speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything. What's the purpose? You were sent for. And there is this kind of confession in your looks in which your modesty is not craft enough to cover. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you. By the rights of our fellowship, be even and direct with me, whether you were sent for or no. Yeah. What say you? Nay! Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold on off. My lord, we were sent for. I will tell you why. I have of late, wherever I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises, and yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, nor woman neither, but to your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh at him? I said, man delights not me. To think, my lord, that if man delights not you, what Lenten entertainments the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither they are coming to offer you service. Well, he that plays the king shall be welcome. What players are they? Even those you were wont to take delight in, the tragedians of the city. <sighs> do they hold the same destination that I did when I was in the city? Are they so fallen? No, indeed, they are not. <laughs> How comes it? Do they grow rusty? Oh, there's been much throwing about of brains. <laughs> oh, there are the players. Gentlemen, your hands come then. The appurtenance of welcome is ceremony and fashion. You are welcome, but my uncle, father, and aunt's mother. Deceived. In what, my dear lord? I am but mad. <laughs> north, northwest. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. Well, be with you, gentlemen, Marky Gildersturn, and you too. At each year I hear that great baby over there is not yet out of its swaddling clouds. How can it the second time come to them? For they say an old man is twice a child. <laughs> The best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral comical, historical pastoral, historical, tragical, comical, pastoral, singing indivisible, or poem on Welcome all, masters, yes. Good my lord, when you see the players well bestowed. Do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the brief and abstract chronicles of the time. After your death, better have a bad epitaph and the report while you live. My lord, I will use them according to their deserts. Come, sirs! <clears throat> also, hear me. You could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines, in which I could insert into it, could you not? Aye, my lord. Very well. You could also play the murder of the tongue. Aye, my lord. Oh, excellent. Follow that lord and look you mind. Thank you. Friends, till tonight. Good, my lord. Now, I'm alone. What a rogue and peasant slave am I? Am I a coward? What an ass am I? But this is most brave that I, the son of a dear father, murdered and prompted to my revenge like heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words. And follow cursing like a very drag. A scullion! 
I have heard that guilty creatures sitting on a plague have by the very cunning of the sea been so struck to the soul that they have proclaimed their malfactions. For murder that would have no tongue, it will speak with the most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father. Before my uncle, I'll observe his looks. I'll tend him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my course. The spirit that I have seen may be the devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. The play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience. Cause he will by no means say. Nor do we find him forwardly sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we bring him on to some confession of his true state. Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman. Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we owe wrought on the way. Of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. And as I think, they have already ordered this night to play before him. <coughs> Tis most true, and he beseeched me to entreat your majesties to. Hear and see the matter with all my heart. And it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive these purposes on to his delights. We will, my lord. Now, good Gertrude, leave us too. We may of their encounter frankly judge. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wonted way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Read on this book. Mm -hmm. I, I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. To be or not to be. That is the question whether it is noble in the mind to suffer. Slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or to take arms against the sea of trouble, and by opposing. And then. To die. To sleep. No more. And in that sleep of death. What dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil. Must give us pause. Does the respect of calamity of so long life, who will bear the lips of the scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, the patient sperm, merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare mark. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, then the I will be on my sins remembered. Good, my lord. How does your honor this many a day? <sighs> well, I humbly thank you. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed, longed to. Redeliver. I pray you, 
Now receive them. Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if it be honest and fair, <laughs> your honesty should have made no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? I did love you once. Indeed. You made me believe so. You should have not believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Fifty two hundred. Why must thou be a bringer of sinners? I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more events at my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape, or time to act them. We are aimed names. All believe not us. Go thy ways to another. Ophelia, where is your father? At home, my lord. You let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool. Nowhere but in his own house. Oh, how have you, sweet heavens? If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plate for thy devil. Be thou as case as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape nor me. Get thee to a battery. Or, if thou wilt not marry, marry a fool. But wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery. Go! <laughs> Make another. You jig, you amble, you list, and you nick at God's creatures and make your wantonness your ignorance.
can't get this piece of work? And the queen, too. And that presently. Then the players make haste. Will you two help to hasten them? We, we will, will, my lord. Um, Give me that man that is not passion slave, and I will wear him in my heart, aye, in my heart of hearts, as I do thee. Oh. There is a play tonight. One scene of it comes in the circumstance in which I have told thee of my father's death. I pray thee, when thou seest that act of foot, even with thy very comments of thy soul, observe my uncle. Together, we will join the censure of the scene. Well, my lord, if you steal all while this play is playing and escape detecting, I will pay the theft. They're coming to the play. Get your place. I must be out. Right. How fair is our cousin Hamlet? <sighs> Excellent in faith of the chameleon's dish. I eat the air promise crammed you. You cannot feed Katie, so. I have nothing but this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No? Nor mine now. My lord, you once played in the university, you say? That did I, my lord, and was accounted a good actor. Oh. What did you enact? I did enact Julius Caesar. <laughs> I was killed in the capital. Mm. Brutus killed me. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital a calf. <laughs> Be the players ready. Aye, right, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet, sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal, more attractive. Oh, do you mark that? Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean my head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. <sighs> Did you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. That's a fair thought. It's a lie between maids' legs. What is, my lord? Oh, nothing. You are merry, my lord. I? Aye, my lord. You're only a jig maker. For what should a man do but be merry? Well, look you now. How cheerfully my mother looks, and my father died within these two hours. Nay, tis twice two months, my lord. So long ago? Died two months and not forgotten yet? And there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. What means your lordship? It means Minching Maleka. It is mischief. Do you like this show and what's the argument of the play? The players cannot keep counsel. They'll tell all. Will he tell us what the show meant? Or any show that you'll show him. Be not you ashamed to show. No, not ashamed to tell you what it means. You are not. You are not. I'll mark the play. For us and for our tragedy. Here, kneeling to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. This is the prologue of the posy of a ring. It is brief, my lord. <laughs> oh, I'll still to take off my edge. Still better and worse. Since love our hearts and Hymen did our hands in my mutual and most sacred bonds. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again, count our love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, and so far from your former state that I distrust you. Yet though I distrust, discomfort you, my lord, it is nothing must. Where love is great, the littlest of doubts are fear, and where little fears grow great, great love grows there. 
Faith, I must leave thee, love, and shortly too. My operant powers leave their function to do, and thou shalt live in this fair world behind. Honored, beloved, and happy what is kind, for husband shalt thou. Oh, confound the rest! Such love needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None who wed the second but who filled the first. The incidences that second marriage brings are base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you think what now you speak, but what we do determine ought we break. Purpose is but the slave to memory, a violent birth, but poor validity. Our thoughts are ours, their ends none their own. So think that will no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Each opposite that blanks the face of joy, meet what I would have well and it destroy. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, I have a wife. deeply scorn, love, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull and fain I would beguile. The tedious day with sleep. Sleep rock thy brain, and never mischance come between us twain. Madam, I like you this play. The lady protests too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. Have you heard the argument? Is there no offense in it? They do ingest. Poison ingest. No offense much to the world. What do you call the poison? The mousetrap. Mary, how? This here is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Prince Argo is the Duke, his wife's name, Baptista. He shall see it on. Oh! This one is Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are good at the chorus, my lord. Hmm. Cost you a groaning to take off my edge. You are keen, you are keen. Thou mixture rank of midnight weeks collected, with Hecate's magic thrice blasted, thrice infected, thy natural magic and dire property. On wholesome life usurp immediately, pours the poison into the sleeper's ears. He poisons him in the garden for his estate, the story's extent. And rich and choice Italian, you shall see anon how the murderer gets in love with Gonzalo's wife. The king rises. But Fighting with false fire. How fares, my lord? Give over this play. Away. Give me some light. All light. Light! <laughs> oh! Yo, you to me. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Horatio, if it's perceived. Very well noted. Upon the talk of the poisoning. Noted that well. Yes! Oh. Yeah. Come, some music. Ah. For, if the king like not the comedy, why, be they like it, he heard it. Mm -hmm. Some music. The recorder. The recorder. Oh, oh, right. Oh. My lord, is my journey too bold? Sir, a whole history. Oh, the king, sir. Aye, what of him? Is in his retirement marvelous distempered. Uh, with drink, sir? No, my lord, rather with colder. <sighs> Your wisdom should signify this more richer to his doctor. Nay, my lord, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I'm, I'm tame. Pronounce. The queen, your mother, mm -hmm. and most great affliction of the spirit, have sent me to you. You are welcome. Good, my lord. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I shall do no payment. If not, your pardon, my return shall be the end of my business. She desires to speak with you in the closet ere you go to bed. We shall obey, for she ten times on earth. Have you any further trade with us? My lord, I once did love me. Yes, but while the grass grows, the proverb is, Something must be. Oh, the recorders! Let me see one. 
Okay, Lord, if I'm doing it, be too bold. Oh, I do not well understand that. Will you play upon this pipe? I cannot, my lord. I do beseech you. I know no touch of it, my lord. Why? Tis as easy as lying. Govern these bandages and lingers with your thumb. Give it breath with your mouth, and it discourse most eloquent. <laughs> Music. Look you, these are the stops. But these cannot come into any errors of harmony. I'm not a skill. <sighs> Why, look you now, how unworthy a thing you make of me. You would play upon me. You would sell me for my lowest notes on the top of my compass. You think I'm easy to be playing on a pipe? <laughs> Call me whatever instrument you may. Though you can fret me yet, you cannot play upon me. God bless you, sir. <clears throat> My lord. The queen would speak with you, and that presently. I will come to my mother by and by. They fool me to the top of my bed. I will come by and by. I will say so. <laughs> by and by is easily said. Leave me, friends. Tis now a very witching time of night. In that churchyard we yawn, and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. But soft to my mother. Let not even the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel. But not unnatural, no. Let me speak of daggers. But you use none. However, my words, so ever she be shamed, to give them seals, never my soul consent. I like it not. Therefore, prepare you. I am commissioned will forthwith dispatch, and he shall long to England with you. We will ourselves provide. Most holy and religious fear it is to keep those many, many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. His rank it smells to heaven. Gath the prime more eldest curse upon me. A brother's murder. Pray can I not? Though inclination be as strong as will, my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man in a double business bound, I stand in pause where I shall first begin in both neglect. But what if this hand were thicker than itself, brother's blood? Is there not rain enough in the heavens to wash it white as snow? Where to serves mercy but to confront the visage of offense? And what's in prayer but this twofold force? To be forestalled and we come to fall, or pardon being down? Then all will go. My fault is past. But what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That will never be because I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, my own ambition, and my queen. May one be pardoned. In return, 
retain the offense. In the corrupt occurrence of this world, offense is killed at hand. They show by justice. And tis often seen the wicked prize itself buys out the law. But tis not so above. There is no shuffling. There the action lies in his true nature. And we ourselves compel even to the teeth and forehead of all our faults to give in evidence. Oh, what then? What rests? Try what repentance can? Yet what can it not? Yet what can it when one cannot repent? Oh, bosom black as death, a lion soul, when struggling to be free, are more engaged. Bow stubborn knees, hard as strings of steel, be soft as sinews of newborn babes. All may be well. Now might I do it? Now he is praying. Now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven, and I am revenged. Well, that would be scant. A villain kills my father, and I, for that, yes, do the same villain send to heaven. No! I know thou more horrid, Hent. When he is drunk, asleep, or in his rage, or in that incestuous <clears throat> pleasure of his bed, then I'll trip him, and that his heels may kick at heaven, and his soul may be as damned and black as hell where to it goes. My mother, she stays. This physique sickly prolongs thy days. <clears throat> my words fly up, and my thoughts remain below. The words. Without thoughts, never to heaven go. Almost as bad, good mother. 
I just kill a king, and there he is. Brother! I just kill a king! Aye, lady. It was my word. A wretched, rash, an intruding fool. I took thee for thy better. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and rush of modesty, takes the fair form, the rose of the fair form of an innocent love, and sends a blister. Me. What act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Look, and on this, the counterfeit president of two brothers. This was your husband. Blasting his brother like a mildew ear. Have you eyes? Have you eyes? Look you. What falls? You cannot call it shame. Where is thy blush? Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul. And there I see such black and green spots as will not leave their taint. A murderer and a villain. A vice of kings! No more! The king, shreds and patches. Save me. Cover me with your wings, you heavenly guards. Oh, dear gracious figure. Alas, he is mad. Do not forget. This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. Speak to her, Hamlet. Hi, lady. How is it with you? Alas, how is it with you? That you do bend your eye on vacancy? And with the incorporal air do you hold discourse? O oh, gentle son, whereon do you look? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all, yet all that is I see. Nor did you hear nothing? <coughs> no, nothing but ourselves. But look! Look! My father, a king, in what's his habitat, as he lived. <laughs> Where he goes now. Back out of the portal. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Throw away the worst part of it, and live with the pure half. We go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. For the same mode. <laughs> I do repent. And heaven that pleases so to punish me with this and this that I have to be their scourge and minister. to England now. You know that? Alack, I had forgot. Tis so concluded on. There's letter sealed there. My two school fellows, whom I trust. As they do out of Spain. They bear the mandate. I will sweep my way and marshal me to neighborhood. Come, sir. To draw toward an end with you. Have. 
She speaks of her father these last seven months since he's been slain, and hems and beats her heart. Her speech means nothing. Yet the unshaped use of it doth move the ears to collection. Would make one think there might be thought, though nothing sure, yet much unhappily. Yes, to our good she were spoken with, for she makes dangerous conjectures upon the old greedy minds. Let her come in. Very well. To my sick soul as singed her nature is, each toy seems prologue to some great amiss, so full of artless jealousy is guilt. It spills itself in fearing to be spilled. Where is the beauty's majesty headed? How oh, now, Ophelia? Where is this king? Oh, sir, stay. 
understand you all without. Thank you. Oh, that bio can give me my thought calmly. Where to calmly? That drop of blood that's calm proclaims me bastard. Cries cuckold to my father. Brands the harlot even here. Between the chaste and smirch brow of my true mother. What is the cause, Leontes? And thy rebellion looks so giant like. Let her go, Gertrude. Do not fear our prison. Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. Let her go, Gertrude. Speak, lady. Where is my father? Dead. But not by him. Let her demand her fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. To hell allegiance. To this point, I stand. That both the world I give to negligence. Let come what comes, I'll only be revenged most thoroughly for my father. Well, good Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear father's death is writ in your revenge, and that sweepstake you will draw both friend and foe, winner and loser. None but his enemies. For you know them. To his good friends, that's why I'll open my arms. And, like the kind, life under pelican, repass them with my blood. Why, now you speak like a good child and a true gentleman, that I am guiltless of your father's death and am most sensible and grief for it. It shall as level to your judgment pierce as day does to your eye. How now, what noise is that? Oh, heat, dry in my brains. Tears seven times salts burn out the sense and virtue in my... Oh, by heavens, thy madness shall be paid by weight, till our scale turn the beam of rose of May. Dear May, kind sister, sweet Ophelia. Documented madness, thoughts and remembrance is fitted. There's fennel for you. And columns. And there's roof for you. And here's some for me. We may call it herb grace. Give you all some violets, but they withered all that my father died. They say he made a good thing. Thoughts of affliction, passion, hell itself. She turns to favor and to prettiness. Laertes, I must give you 
coming through grief, or you deny me right. Make choice of whom your wisest friends you will, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it its due content. Let this be so. His means of death, his obscure funeral, no trophy, sword, nor attachment over his bones, no noble rights, nor formal ostentation, cry to be heard. That I must call it a question. So you shall. And where the events is, let the great acts fall. I pray you, go with me. From Ham. Who brought them? Sailors, my lord. So they say. I saw them not. I would give them Levi, Claudio, and you receive them from his me. He who brought them. This is for your majesty. This is for the queen. Land you should try to leave us. I am mighty, you shall know I am set naked on your kingdom. Tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall first ask thee thereunto, recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Ham. But what should this be? Are all the words come back? Or is it some abuse or no such thing? Know you the hand? It is Ham's character. Can you advise me? I'm lost in it, my lord. But still, let him come. Towards the very sickness in my heart that I shall live, and I get to tell him to his teeth. Thus didst thou. If it be so, Laertes, as how should it be? How otherwise will you be ruled by me? <laughs> my lord, so you will not rule me to a peace. If he be now returned as checking at his voyage, and that he means no more to undertake it. I will work him to an exploit now right in my device, under the which he shall not choose but fall. And call next. My lord, I will be fooled. Why ask you this? Not that I think you did not love your father. But Hamlet comes back. What would you do to show yourself your father's daughter indeed more than in words? To cut his throat in the church. Revenge should have no bounds. We'll bring you in fine together. Place a wager on your heads, and in a pass of practice, you will requite him for your father. I will do it. And for that purpose, I invite this here. I bought an unction of a mountebank, so more to that. But dip a knife in it where draws no blood, so cataplasm rare, that is but scratched with all. I'll touch my points with this contagion, <laughs> if I gather him slightly and... Let's further speak of this. I'll place a solemn wager on your cunnings, as to make your bouts more violent to that end. Ron, if he calls for drink, I'll have prepared him a chalice for the knots, where on Sipping. If he by chance escaped your venom stuck, our purpose may hold there. Anna, good Gertrude. One woe doth tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow. Your sisters drown, Laertes. Drowned. Where? There 
Mary's willow grows a slanted rug. There with fantastic garlands did she come. Crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples. There an envious silver broke. When down herself fell in the weeping brook, her clothes spread wide and mermaid-like, which time she chanted snatches of long tunes as one incapable of her own distress. But long it could not be to let her garments, heavy with their drink, hold the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. And last then, and she is drowned, drowned, drowned. Too much water. <laughs> This will give it rise again. Therefore, let's follow. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a 
woman wants her, but uh, rest her soul. She's dead. Oh, what does she know? By the Lord, I've just two and two months I have taken note of it. But how long hast thou been a grave maker? Uh, all the days I'm here, I came to it that our last king, uh, Hamlet, overcame forty. How long will the man lie in the earth ere he rot? But here's a school now. Uh, this school has lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? Uh, this same school, sir, was Yorick's skull. Oh, uh, the king's jester. This and that. Let me see it. Alas. Oh, York! I knew you'd appreciate it. Ah, fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. Where be our jives now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that will want to set the table on a roll. Pretty Horatio. Tell me one thing. What is it, my lord? Also, I think Alexander looked over this fashion, ere he lying here. Hmm. He didn't know. And smelled so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Soft you down. Here comes the king. The queen, the courtiers, who is this they follow? With such main rights. The corpse who does follow must have foredone its own life towards the sun estate. Couch me a while and mark. Lady, what is the reason you use me thus? 
Let Hercules do what he may. The cat will mew, and the dog will have his day. I pray. Wait upon him, good Horatio. Very well. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We will put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, set some watch upon your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shall we see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be. So you see the other. You do, you do remember the circumstances. Do I remember it, my lord? Sir, in my heart there was this kind of fighting that would not let me sleep. But when our deep thoughts do call, there's a divinity that shapes our end. It will be short. But till the earth is, I forgot myself. And by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. But, sure, his grief to put me into a towering passion. <laughs> my lord, I know you are not ignorant. I would you well, sir. Surely you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. I dare not confess that. Lest I should compare with him in excellence, but to know Manuel or to know himself. My lord, the king has laid in a dozen passes between yourself and she. She will not exceed you three hits. She's laid on twelve for nine. How if I answer no? Then the opposition of your character is in trial. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it pleases Majesty as such, it is a really time of day with me. I will win, and I can. And if not, I'll gain nothing but my shame in the audience. You will lose this wager, my lord. I do not think so. Oh my god. I've been in continual practice. I shouted at the odds. If your mind is like anything, Obey. I will for stalls repair hither and just say you are not fit. Not a bit. Uh, we defy augury. What? There's a special fall in the providence of a sparrow. If it be now, it is yet to come. If it be yet to come, it will not be now. If it be now, it is yet to come. What, my lord? Uh, because the king. Come, Hamlet. Come. Take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, ma'am. I've done you wrong. But pardon says you are a lady. I'm satisfied in nature, whose motive should stir me most to my revenge. But, in terms of honor, I stand aloof. But, Till that time, I do receive your offered love, love, love. We will not wrong it. 
I embrace it freely. And with this sister's wager, frankly, I'll play. I'll be your foil, Laertes. In my ignorance, your skill shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fiery off indeed. You mock me, sir. No, why this hand? The hand that you know the wager? Oh, very well. Your grace hath laid the odds, oh, the weaker side. Oh, I do not fear. Oh, we have seen you both, but she is better. And we have therefore odds. Set the stoops of wine on that too. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath. And you, the judges, very wary eye. Molly. Come, my lord. Oh, my mother! Ah! 